Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tips series on GreenhouseGrower.com. This month, we are talking with insect control experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pests, as well as how growers can identify and control them. We recently sat down with Dr. Nancy Rexigal of Syngenta to talk about whitefly. Here's what she had to say. So white flies can be very difficult to control because both the adult and immature stages primarily are, are feeding on the undersides of the leaves. That's where you see them. You may see an occasional adult on the surface, but they are primarily on the undersides of the foliage. And so if you're trying to control them with spray applications alone, uh, achieving good spray coverage um, can be very challenging. Another challenge, and the other challenge is, I like to call it the population potential. And, you know, white flies, uh, adults, adult females can lay 100 eggs, generally in their lifetime. And so the white fly populations can increase very rapidly in warm conditions, such as you have in a greenhouse environment. And with a new generation uh, coming every 14 to 21 days, you can see that it doesn't take very long for these populations um, to reach damaging levels uh, if, they're, if they're not controlled. Another challenge that growers deal with is dealing with resistant populations, um, insecticide resistant populations. Um, there are several different types of white fly that can be problematic in ornamental production, but of primary concern are two biotypes or genetic variants of Bamesia tabassi uh, or the silverleaf white fly that can be a problem. And they're known um, to the industry as biotype B and biotype Q. And while you can't tell them apart from their physical appearance uh, or the damage that they do, because the damage is the same, um, they do differ in their sensitivity to different insecticides. So it's very important um, that you have a good rotation program and you are incorporating products that you know have activity um, on both biotypes because you can inadvertently select uh, for one biotype to remain um, if the insecticides that you're using are not effective on, on the one biotype strain. Overall, the discovery and registration process for uh, coming up with new modes of action to control whitefly are coming, but they're coming at a much slower pace. So it is very important for growers to preserve the plant protection products that they currently have um, by following some uh, you know, good resistant management uh, practices. That's, re that's really, really key. I guess first and foremost, the best way to prevent uh, problems or outbreaks with whitefly uh, are to be prepared and stay ahead of them. So um, number one, inspect new plants when they come into the facility and, and check them for, for stages, for eggs, immatures, even adults. Um, they can come in on plant material. Um, know which crops are prone to whiteflies. Uh, whiteflies are attracted to certain crops. And so make sure um, you check those routinely, um, checking the undersides of the foliage um, because they like to lay the eggs usually they're feeding and laying eggs on the newly expanded leaves in the upper part of the canopy. Just below that would have been the next level of eggs that have now hatched and there's immatures. So it is important to check all levels of the plant canopy um, for the pest. Flies can be year round pests because they can hop from crop to crop that remain in the greenhouse. And so um, it is important that in between uh, production cycles to, you know, clean up the area, uh, remove any weeds that are under the benches because they can, you know, certainly live and survive on those weeds and then just go to the next crop that comes in the greenhouse. We recommend in our rotation selecting, you know, at least three products with different um, modes of action classifications um, that, you know, have some proven activity on the pests. Um, they should position these products in a rotation program based on their activity and strengths. Um, and so that's very important. So early on in the crop cycle, when plants are small, spray applications can be quite effective 
um, because the plants, you know, are small and so it's easier to get um, some good spray coverage. But then as the plants get bigger, um, that becomes more challenging. And that's when the systemic tools um, are important. We recommend main spring in our program um, because it is a new systemic uh, material that can be used in the greenhouse. It doesn't disrupt any of the beneficials that could be assisting in the program. Um, and it can be applied as a drench, giving you, you know, up to 12 weeks of control. Remember that it's, it's actually more costly to fight a battle rather than prevent it. So um, being proactive, staying on top of this is, is really the number one, um, the number one thing to do.